Seafarers are often not seen. They kind of slip into our ports and our terminals in very obscure parts of our cities. Part of being seafarer is very challenging. For me, I work hard for the main purpose to earn money, to have a living for my family. Uh, the crisis started. My wife, uh, she lost her job. It was quite difficult, so I had to go back to sea. Oh, you have a grandson? Yes, yes, she got uh, 10 months. Uh, oh, so 10. it's hard to be away from him. Yes. At the time also my daughter was uh, still a toddler. When I left home uh, she was uh, barely speaking some words and when I come back home she was speaking like grown-up person already. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's really a sacrifice that you do for your family. I find it most enriching I work with people who are different from me. You stop to think about it, our economy would come to a grinding halt if these wonderful people didn't do what they do, which is to leave their families, leave their homes and everything that they love. They do it for love for their families. Christmas at Sea is a, a wonderful way to get involved. We collect items and these sorts of things are really a blessing to our seafarers who are away from their families at Christmas time. We make sure that somebody sees them and somebody attends to their practical needs. Yeah, our work with immigrants is really kind of a rich history. We started out as an immigrant house uh, in 1873. Yeah. Sam was in the detention center for eight months. We visited him there. The process me I went through, it's rigorous, and I would never pray anybody go through it. We don't have a link outside, so we don't get to see outside. And so by having those visits from volunteers really meant a lot to me. When they do get released, they won't be homeless. They will have a place to stay with us here, at Seafarers International House, and that just relieves them immensely. One of the things I know Seafarers did for me was to build my confidence. I'm really, really grateful that I they offered me a place to stay. They have a social worker who's very helpful. I consider this my second chance in life. People are fleeing from persecution in their own countries, and they are just so grateful to America that we welcome them. How do you say hello in your language? Namaste. Namaste. As Leviticus says, we are called to welcome the stranger in our midst. And I want to, I want to give you this from one of our... Um, As Hebrew says, by entertaining churches. strangers, we sometimes entertain angels unaware. They have ministered as much to us as we to them because they are such clear reminders to us that we don't need to fear the stranger. As an immigrant, as a person like me, we are not a liability to people. We want to be responsible in the society. I've been here so long, it's like my home right here. Uh, I love this, this house and uh, I can say it's my second house. I just feel very much at home. Uh, all the people is here, it's, it's, amazing. it's amazing, it's amazing, it's amazing. The guest house staff often feels like they are just as much a part of the mission as our chaplains. I brought my brother's ashes here and they did a service for him, so they, they kind of looked out for you right here. I really believe if it wasn't here, I wouldn't have the ability to come home as often as I do. We take that calling, that biblical calling, very seriously, and uh, we're very grateful to be able to concretely welcome the stranger, welcome the sojourner, welcome um, those from far away, and welcome those who are on their way Say. The more you love, the more you live.